Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Sambhu from CloudTech. Today we'll talk about how we can like uh, connect the private EC2 instance uh, in AWS. Okay guys. And for this today agenda, like uh, it's kind of like uh, how we can create like a Jambox or maybe in Baston host, right? How we can create in AWS. That's what our today agenda. And for this today's demo, like uh, I have already talked about in VPC session like this architecture diagram. So let me explain here what I am going to do here is like uh, in this in this diagram if you see right here I have one uh, public subnet and one is the private subnet. In public subnet I have that API and private subnet I have that kind of app or DB server right. So if you want to talk or if you want to do SSH to a particular this private uh, subnet uh, EC2 instance right. Uh, suppose if you want to try like something from here if you try here to SSH will that allow here uh, if you try here SSH from here to directly from this is uh, SSH client to direct to this EC2 instance with that private IP it, it will not allow because uh, there is a uh, no public IP right so you cannot do that uh, like uh, this is not possible actually so this is not possible so what the solution here is like if you want to communicate this private uh, EC2 instance then how you can connect right. So there is a way to connect. So what we need to do here is the concept of Jambox. So what we have to do we have to create first Jambox or Baston host like uh, which Baston host have like private and public both the IP available and from this Jambox private or public IP which is available in this Jambox site right? by using that public IP. First you have to connect to this jump box, then once you connect that jump box right, then from the jump box you are able to connect that private EC2 instance. So let me show you that in AWS console how we can do that. So let me go here. So first let's go to the VPC. So for more details about VPC guys, I will recommend please have a look my VPC session. So there I have a demo, like explain each and every component about the VPC and with the hands on. Okay guys, so so today's demo I will use the default VPC. I am not planning to create any VPC. So this is a VPC dashboard. I have one default VPC which is 4.8. Okay. And in the default VPC I have couple of public subnet. So like six subnet I have. Okay and all the subnet have their different CIDR range if you see here like uh, starting from 16 and 0, 16 then 32, 48, 64, 80 right so from 0 it is starting then 16, 30, like every 16, 16 is adding right so and uh, this is all are public and there are different availability zone if they have deployed this okay guys so what I am going to do here is like as per this diagram right architecture diagram those whatever uh, subnet is available is kind of public subnet right we don't have any private subnet right so let's create the private subnet and with the pri private route table for this today's demo okay guys so what we can do here is let's create on private subnet so in the default VPC itself so like I told you right it's starting from uh, 310 282 we have seen right so now let's add 16 more so private update something any name you can give so as per and the preference anything you can select so let's select first one itself and here let's uh, give that 96 okay guys why 96 because uh, that subnet right whatever subnet we have if you see here right still 80 is there right so next will become that's a uh, 96 on right if you add that 80 to 60 right so let me show you that yeah, last is 80 right 80 plus 60 so 96 right if, again if you want one more subnet then 96 plus 16 right so uh, like uh, then it will come uh, 96 plus 16 like this you can add so 112 okay right? something like that next subnet will come like that we have calculate the CIDR value so I have already demonstrated about how we can calculate CIDR value all this thing how IP address basically it is calculated all this thing and what all IP basically it is reserved for a particular uh, CIDR right so in the VPC session I have already deep details I have explained to more details about 
you guys so you can have a look that so let's go here okay, i'm already creating here so let's create the private submit here and then we need to create a, here default uh, route table is already there and in the default route table if you see right here let me show you that quickly so we have the internet gateway which is communicating over the public right this is the way you can communicate right apart from that this is the another local uh, submit right but here the uh, internet gateway is attached right so in this route table so what we are going to do we are creating route table which will will not expose any internet gateway there no public access okay right? so private route table something like that and select the vpc here and then create it once you create let's associate the subnet here so edit subnet group and let's select the private here okay guys so this is done so now route table this this all are done right so now what we are going to do we will launch the ec2 instance so let's go to ec2 dashboard and do here is i have already instance right so let's terminate this instance not really good let's launch instance here First, we'll launch the like jump box, or maybe we can launch that uh, jump bash on right. So, so C2, something like that. Let's select the free tiers here and T2 micro, and then key pair. We can select that uh, existing key pair I have already created. So that one I, I am using so if you want you can create uh, another key pair also here and then coming to this uh, network selection so let's select the default vpc and here we have in the us east 1a right here we have two availability zones so for this one let's select the public one subnet this is the public subnet right because other one is the private subnet so let's select the public one and auto assign IP right since it is a public so we will uh, do both here like uh, public and private both the IP should be there so since it is a jump box right so and let's I have already security group so let's select the security group for more details you guys can refer I have already demonstrated about this security group also you can refer that so kind of jump box uh, launch is done so it is it will take some time Meantime, what we can do, either we can launch one RDS instance or maybe how we can create our database instance in the EC2 instance, right? I have already demonstrated like uh, if you want to install MySQL on the EC2 instance or any RDS database you, if you like to install, right? So I have demonstrated those in my previous session, so you guys can have a look at For this today's session, I will just launch one EC2 instance to the private subnet and then we'll see how we can connect that, okay guys? So let's launch one more EC2 instance here. Let's give that D EC2, something like that. Okay. And let's select here this one, keep here. Let's select this one. And edit the internet gateway here. So now we, this time we launch the EC2 instance in the private submit. Okay, guys. And it's auto assign disabled, it's auto automatically disabled, it is not enabled, right? And let's select the same security group here also. And everything is same, only this does change. We are the auto assign IP, US public IP, we are not exposing here for the pri private sub uh, instance, right? So, and private instance we are launching to private sub, okay, guys? So, let's launch this one. Our instance, both the instance are ready here. Jump box, okay, guys. So, if you see jump box, so initializing. So, let's connect it. Here we have that. See, this public here we have public IP address and private IP address, right? And we have launched this. If you go to the same networking, right, you will see that uh, subnet, what subnet we have launched. We assist one right, but if you go to that other DB instance, right? 
which is in the here if you see there is no public ip address actually if there is no public ip address then how we can connect it? that's the interesting thing by using that jam box whatever we have created right by using that only we can connect this uh, private instance also so this is how we can create the jam box so let's see if we can able to connect also the private issue instance if you see here here and this is the sub private subnet we have deployed if you see here this is the public subnet we have deployed if you go to the networking and this is the subnet type okay guys this is the public subnet right okay so let's connect this instance here so how we can connect so let me show you that so it is connected so let's uh, here upload that pim file also so that we can connect that is because uh, if you see here right in our private is instance so let me show you that we have created with that uh, pim file here let me show you that uh, here is no public dns ip address right? and this is our security group and this is our key right so this is the key i have uploaded here if you see here that key is uploaded so either you can vi also and you can copy and paste also anything is fine and uh, for more details about mobile extreme how we can connect so you can refer my previous video also okay guys so here what we can do ssh hyphen i okay so to user at the rate and then we can use that IP address here. So let's go to instance here. Again. Okay. This is the private IP. Right? So let's select this private IP. So, permission deny what it is in bad permission. Okay, what it is there? LS. Minus LTR. Okay, we need to give that uh, CH mode 400 the permission SSH key. So, guys, keep in mind that point also. So, now if you see now LS minus LTR, now we are in 400, right? So, if you see here, permission got changed, right? So, now what we can do now do SSH again. Now we are able to connect. See. This is the our private IP address, right? So 96 to 25, right? So let's see here. 96 to 25, right? This is the instance we have connected, right? So that's how we can connect that uh, private instance from that jump box, and that's how we can create the jump box. But uh, whatever we have created here, right? If you want to uh, communicate to internet here, that is not possible. Google.com it won't allow you why because here uh, as per uh, in my vpc session i have explained right one more component about the nat gateway so the nat gateway you have to attach to the public subnet right once you attach to the public subnet for that private is to instance right? public private subnet right? then only you can able to communicate if uh, from this private subnet to over the internet otherwise it's not possible so more details about how you can associate that the nat gateway with this uh, public subnet for the private subnet right you can refer my VPC video so that you will get clear idea. Then you able to communicate talk from this private sub uh, EC2 instance to over the internet also, right? And one more thing, let me show you that directly we'll try to SSH. So let's try SSH also. Uh, this uh, IP address, okay, guys. So let's try that. Without jump box, just try EC2 user. Okay. Uh, here we have to give our private IP. So let's select this one and let's try. It won't allow you because uh, since it is a private IP, it won't allow you. It will do through an error actually. Let's see. See, it is not connecting actually. It will throw an error after some time. If you see right, google.com 100% packet loss here. See, it is not connecting. Network connection timeout, right? So that's how we need that uh, jump box, and this is how we can create. So I hope this session will helpful to you guys. 
and if you feel this video is valuable to you guys then please do like share and subscribe my channel that will really inspire to me okay guys see you in my next video uh, chalo bye